particular mosque, Makkah Mosque, was uh, built in 2003, so we've been here uh, five years. But we wanted to have a mosque which can blend in in the local surroundings as well as you know uh, retain that uh, element of uh, being Middle Eastern mosque. And so we've got Persian influences, Arabic influences, as well as you know just modern European. Location-wise, I mean, it was it was it used to be a historic uh, place of worship here. So we we're quite pleased to actually having rather than it, be, it being converted into flats or, or something else, that is still a place of worship. And uh, it was a place of worship uh, for followers of Abrahamic faith. And as Muslims, we are also followers of Abrahamic faith. And it was all funded by the local community. It cost around two million pounds, uh, and it was all locally funded. Uh, people, you know, the way we funded it is like people. Some people contributed as much as twenty-five thousand pounds. Others, you know, about ten pounds, five pounds, etc. And it was like just raising the community spirit, so that everyone contributed to an extent um, to get this mosque uh, going. We just didn't want to be a traditional mosque in the sense that um, just having it open for leading prayers, uh, etc. We wanted uh, the mosque to be uh, traditional as well as progressive and liberal in the sense, and therefore, like we've organised uh, Islamic exhibitions here or connecting cultures event. In terms of the colours, like for instance, just around, we've got here blue and golden colour, and. The reason we chose these two colours was like the heavens as we know it are, are, are blue and one of the precious material on earth is gold. So we have a combination of like heavens and the earth and that's why you see like you know, gold and, and blue carpets etc. And then inside the dome all the colours that have been used either outside or inside have been used inside the dome. And it was just like bringing the floral harmony combining the heavens and the earth. Except one colour, the lilac, the pink colour has not been used in any mosque in the UK. It just we thought we'd give a soft touch and, uh, to that. Uh, and nowhere else in, in the UK, uh, there's so much calligraphy inside the dome as here. And we've got a combination of verses from the Quran, um, scriptures, um, and also patterns, because Muslims are not allowed to have images and pictures inside the mosque. So they developed this art of arabesque, which was like you know, having patterns and flowers and leaves representing the floral harmony and bringing that nature aspect of it into it. In, um, just in the last two circles, that's um, chapter 55 of the Quran, and it's a very unique chapter the, uh, because it addresses the reader or reciter um, directly. So, and also the theme inside the dome is mercy, and therefore this chapter is called the merciful, referring to God Almighty. And it mentions all the like all blessings that God has bestowed upon human beings, and you know, all of it. It starts from the sun, the moon, the planets, the stars, the trees, the, you know, the flowers, everything, you know, in terms of nature. And then after mentioning each blessing, it addresses the reader, asking which of God's blessing would you deny? So it was like when you when you're looking at it, it's like you know the God is you know, kind of communicating with you, and you're communicating with God. And it, it, it ends the chapter ends on this uh, verse, which says, "Isn't your Lord's name beautiful?" And then it was like you look up all the way and say, "Yeah, wow, isn't my Lord's name beautiful?" This is a very personal shrine. Um, the, it's important to have candles because it's the, the light um, and incense. And there's usually water as well, but I don't have water. I've, I've got these items because they're for me. That's my grandmother's bowl and she's long since dead. That's my wedding bouquet. And there, that um, little stone thing there, I just put that there because I think it's beautiful and I like the idea of the Buddha holding it in his hands. And the two red um, pieces of, of thread are from two of my friends who gave me those when they were um, when they took refuge in their tradition and they gave me them as a wedding present um, and it means a lot to me um, and this is just because it was given to me by my nephew who's now a Buddhist too and, um, and the stones inside are, I like colour and there's lots of colour there. In the Zen tradition um, it's important to meditate or you're supposed to meditate all the time, so like when you're walking around, you I don't mean that you're sort of ignoring the world, but like working meditation, you know, focusing on it minute by minute, being mindful. So you don't need a shrine, but I think the idea of the shrine is to sort of like touch t the touchstone, to remind you. And I think that like, um, I, even though you're supposed to be meditating all the time, 
obviously it's very hard in everyday life, you know, busy life, buzz, buzz, buzz everywhere. Um, but I think that, um, so I think it's very important to meditate, just come back to yourself and to have your shrine to re remind you of what you're trying to achieve and where you're going.